Moses in the bulrushes. Since the time of Joseph, the children of Israel had thrived and prospered in the land of Egypt. Generations came and went and they multiplied, spreading far and wide throughout the fertile country. But one day, a new pharaoh who had never heard of the Israelites' famous ancestor, Joseph, came to the throne and was consumed with fear. Look, he said to his counselors, the Israelites are everywhere. There are far too many of them. If war breaks out, they will side with our enemies. He ordered that the Israelites be forced to labor, building stone cities with their bare hands. But the more cruelly the Israelites were treated, the quicker they multiplied. Then Pharaoh had a better idea. He ordered that all male children born to Israelite women should be put to death at birth. But the midwives took no notice. Why have you let the boys live? thundered Pharaoh. Israelite women aren't like Egyptian women, the midwives said. They are healthy and give birth before the midwives arrive. At his wit's end, Pharaoh declared, every boy that is born must be thrown into the Nile, but let every girl live. Now, there was a couple who belonged to the tribe of Levi, and the wife had just given birth to a son. She could not bring herself to comply with Pharaoh's cold-blooded order, and for three months, she hid her baby son at home. But as the infant grew bigger and noisier, it became impossible. So she fetched a basket and made it watertight. Then she laid her baby in it and took it to the banks of the Nile, hiding it in the bulrushes. Her young daughter went with her to keep watch. Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe in the river and caught sight of the basket. She sent a maid to fetch it, and as she lifted the cover, the baby whimpered sweetly and her heart melted. It must be one of those poor Israelite babies, she said. At that moment, the baby sister asked innocently, Shall I get one of the Israelite women to nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter agreed. So the baby grew up by his real mother, and when he grew older, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him as her own. She named him Moses, which means to draw out, because she had drawn him out of the water. Understanding the story. The birth of Moses came almost 300 years after Joseph's death during a period in which the Israelite population expanded greatly. The Pharaoh feels under threat from the Israelites and is determined to destroy them. It is the Pharaoh's daughter who rescues and raises the baby boy. Moses will go on to lead the Israelites and save them from slavery. Now we're going back to page 62. Victory Steels. Steels were upright slabs crafted to commemorate special events. The Merneptah steel above includes pictures and text for King Merneptah circa 1213 to 1203 BCE and is the only Egyptian source to mention the Israelites as a settled people. Papyrus Boats. The Hebrew for basket is used in the Bible to describe both Noah's Ark and the container in which baby Moses was found. It actually means a papyrus boat. Small boats made of strong reeds were used to transport people and goods on the Nile River.